five pro secrets for working with JavaScript objects that nobody knows about. Hey guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm recording live in my quarantine facility in Bangkok, Thailand, where I'm currently being held captive for, for two weeks. I'm just kidding, uh, it's not that bad. Um, so this is a good opportunity for me to record some more YouTube videos. So the topic of today's video is five advanced JavaScript secrets for working with objects. And this will help you speed up your development workflow a little bit and also write much more efficient and cleaner code. I'm gonna upload the examples today to GitHub. So if you check the description down below, uh, you'll find a link for all of these examples. So the first thing we're gonna look at today is how to conditionally add properties to a JavaScript object. So you can see in my example here, I've got uh, two constants up here, I've got age, sex equals male, and then I have to find an object called user, create a property called name, and set this to Kyle. Then down below, what I'm doing here through a series of very messy if statements is checking some conditions and then adding more uh, key properties and values to this object. So you can see I've got, if age is greater or equal than 18, then create a property called adult, set it to true. Otherwise, if age is less than 18, create a property called child and set it to true. And then down here, um, if this constant called sex exists, then create a new property called sex and assign it the value of the sex constant. So if I log this out, you will see that we should get an object with these three properties. Boom, okay? This code works, but it's extremely messy. And if you wanna conditionally add a lot of properties, you can have a lot of if statements. So what we can actually do, and this is much more efficient, is first of all, get rid of this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is use the spread operator to, and then put in a condition. So if age is greater than or equal to 18, then adult equals true. So basically what we're just saying here is if this condition, age is greater than or equal to 18, merge this object with this object, uh, which essentially is just gonna add this property adult to this object. So if I save that, log it, boom. And then we can do the same thing for if age is less than 18, then child equals true. Obviously this isn't gonna append this property because the age is 34. Okay, and then we do the same thing with sex. So we can just do if sex exists, then, oh, just get rid of that. If sex exists, then that, boom. So much easier, so much cleaner, and not an if statement in sight. Okay, the second example we're gonna look at today is optional chaining. If you're not familiar with optional chaining, you're probably familiar with the pain point that I'm about to demonstrate. So for this example, let me just clear this. Uh, no. For this example, I've got an object called user. Inside the user object, there is another object called company. And then within that, I have an object called address, which has three properties, the number, street, and city. So what I'm gonna do here is try and log out this object, but you may have noticed that I've typoed address, not typoed, but instead of address, I've written location. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna throw an error because there is no this there is no location in this. So if I do this, boom, we get an error message. This is obviously not good. Um, if your application is gonna fall over, um, over something as, as simple as this, now you might be thinking, I'll just use the correct property name, Cal, duh. Uh, but if you're working with a, an object that comes from an API or a third party, you might not necessarily know exactly what's gonna come back. Um, you can't depend on that service to, to always return the same structure. So you do need to test 
um, the object before you write, before you write it out. So his, historically what we would have done in JavaScript is this, and this is painful. So if user and, and user company and, and user company address and, and user company address dot street and this time should work yeah so you know we're checking you know if this was if I if I had misspelled this again so we do location location um, it won't error it just won't execute this because uh, this is statement is never true. Now you can see even from three objects deep, two objects deep, this is messy, like this is really messy stuff. Um, if you're working with an object that's maybe ten, nested 10 objects deep into its parent object, like this is an absolute disaster. So what we can actually do with newer versions of JavaScript is use what's called optional chaining. So we do console log, uh, and then we we'll just say user, question mark, uh, company, question mark, address, question mark, street. So this is just basically going, if the user exists, check does company exist, company exists, check does the address exist, if the address exists, print out the street. So we should get the street name here, okay? So that works in an example where all these things exist. If I change this to location, which is wrong, instead of an error message, what we're gonna get this time is undefined. Okay, so using optional chaining, we can actually just loop through the object, check if all the properties exist. If they do, um, we'll get the result. If not, we'll get undefined um, rather than an error message. And then in your code, you can check if it's undefined, then um, do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, but that's, much, that's a much better problem to have than having an error message. Okay, let's move on to our next example. So this time we're going to look at using object shorthand. This is super simple, but it'll save you um, a lot of time. So if we, in this example, we have three constants, uh, first name, last name, company, and then I create a user that basically has those property names and then assign the value of the variable. So we just log this out, shorthand, boom, we get an object with with those properties. Now, because these variable names and the key names are the same, we don't actually have to use these. We could actually just get rid of these key names completely. Could even move that onto one line of code for efficiency. Save that. And we get the exact same result. Obviously, this is only going to work if your key names are going to match your, your variable names. Um, otherwise, you will need to explicitly define the, the key names. Another trick is basically the opposite of what we've just done is using object deconstruction. So, so here we have an object with uh, our property and values already set. And um, then beneath that, I'm basically creating a ver two variable names, first name and last name, and then assigning them these values from the object. So if I log this out, we get the first name. If you want to extract a lot of variables from an object, you're going to have a lot of lines of code. So what we can actually use, do is get rid of this, and we can use object deconstruction. So we can say, right, get the first name, the last name, equals and then the name of the object. So this is basically just going to extract the first name and last name from the object and put those into um, some variables. Boom, super simple. And finally, our last example then is how to find an object inside an array of objects. Okay, so let's do... So here I've got an array of objects called users and then two simple objects in it. Um, with, the user, with two users, they each have an ID, a name, and a company name. Now, traditionally, what we would have done is something like this: is you know, uh, 
create an empty variable for the to store the result, loop through every object in the array, check if this key name matched Kyle. If it does, then put that into the result object. Um, this is obviously very dirty, so let's get rid of that. And what we can do is go result equals find x x dot name equals Kyle. Let's log that out. Whoops. Oh, sorry. Users dot find. Need to put in the actual you know, the array. So, boom. It's find it. So what's happening here is find is a method of JavaScript objects. It takes a function as an argument, and then it's going to pass x. So basically, x is this function that's just going to loop through every object in the array, um, which is x. And then we just test if x's name is equal to cal, then that function is going to return this object, and then we can assign that to result. You can also do find index as well. So if you just want to actually find the position in the array, we will get zero. Okay, super simple, much cleaner than using a for loop. I hope these little tricks were useful and it will help you write more efficient code. Um, if you find the video useful, please like and subscribe. If you have any requests for things that you would like me to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. As I said at the start, you know, I'll put a link to GitHub down in the description so you can actually download um, these examples. Awesome. Thank you very much for tuning in.